All right, guys, welcome back to the Tutor Learning Center. This is JD Tutor, and I'm here to teach you more Algebra 2 Lesson 2 2 from College Springboard. Graphing systems of inequalities. All right, guys, before we get started, please, please, please um, press that like button, uh, subscribe, and put on your notifications as your school um, progresses. So will the videos in this um, in this uh, course. So I want to know who I'm helping, guys. So uh, the views, the likes, and uh, if it's really helping you guys, okay? So uh, please press like, subscribe, and put on your notifications. All right, so learning targets represent constraints by equations or inequalities. Use a graph to determine solutions of a system of inequalities. All right, let's look at number one. Uh, Roy, ah, uh, Roy from previous, um, I think lesson two dash one. All right, so we know that Roy, let's look at Roy, his spending budget was 1360. We can't go over that. Remember that? And uh, he had $100 uh, for each ticket and $40 for each meal. All right. Now that we're kind of refreshed on that, let's do for tickets. So remember 100, okay, each and 40 each, all right? And his limit was 1360. You can't go above that. So uh, I have off to the side our calculations, guys. I'm just gonna do the first one here, 60 times 100. I'm sorry, six times 100, excuse me. Plus 16 times 40. All right, so Roy spending money depends on both the number of tickets T and the number of meals M. Determine whether each option is feasible for Roy and provide a rational a rationale in the table below. So tickets, if he wants to do uh, six tickets, he'll do six times 100 plus 16. Uh, times 40 equals 1240. Yes, it is feasible because 1240 is less than or equal to 1360. So let's do over here, eight, eight and 14. Eight tickets, 14 meals. Eight times 100 plus 14 times 40 equals 1360. Ah, right on the money. Uh, if he, yes, it's feasible. 1360 is equal to 1360. All right, we have 10 tickets, 12 meals. Uh, if he wants 10 tickets, 12 meals, um, can we do that? 10 times 100 plus 12 times 40 equals 1480. No, that puts it over Roy's budget. So it is not feasible because 1480 is greater than 1360. All right. So let's look at, oh, right away, we already know we don't do decimals. We don't do partials. You can't buy a partial ticket right, or a partial meal, right? 14.5 uh, times 100 plus 11 times 40 um, equals 890. No, it's not feasible, not possible to buy a half a ticket. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, a whole meals, but a half a ticket. All right. And we're going to be using all of this. We're going to be using uh, it's like a build up. We're going to be using it as we go along. So. Let's go to um, two, construct, construct viable arguments for all ordered pairs, uh, T comma M, that are feasible options. Explain why each statement below must be true. All coordinates in the ordered pairs are integer values. All right, let's look at the answer. It is not possible to buy part of a ticket, um, part of a meal, or part, or part of a ticket, so only integer values are allowed. Integers are... Uh, one, two, three, four, all whole numbers, right? Can't buy part of a ticket here, 4.5, big no-no. B, if graphed in the coordinate plane, all ordered pairs would fall either in the first quadrant or on the positive M axis. The number of tickets must be greater than or equal to zero. All right, similarly, the number of meals must be greater than zero. Let's look at number three. 
write a linear, a linear inequality that represents all ordered pairs t and m, t comma m, that are feasible options for Roy. And we talked about this. 100 tickets plus 40 meals is less than or equal to 1360. For t is greater or equal to zero and m is greater than zero. Let's look at number four. If Roy buys exactly two meals each day, determine the number of tickets that he could purchase in five days. Show your work. All right, guys. So two meals each day times five days. So that'll equal 10 meals. So two times five equals 10. All right. So we're looking at meals right now. This is what we're concentrating on. Yes, they said um, meals, but ultimately we're looking for tickets. The opposite, we're looking for tickets. All right, so how are we going to do that? Uh, we've done similar uh, equations like this in uh, like algebra, I think. All right, guys, so look, 100T plus 40, substitute that in there with the 10 meals because we want to find the tickets. Um, so 100T plus 40 times 10 is less than or equal to 1360. Uh, 100T plus 400, where'd we get that 400? It's from the 40 times the 10 is less than or equal to 1360. And how did we get that 100T by itself? We minus this 400 from both sides. Okay, cancel out. All right, so 100T is less, uh, less than or equal to 960. So 1360 minus 400 is 960, but we're not done yet. Divide by the 100. All right. If you guys are brushed up on your algebra, uh, go ahead and fast forward the video. Um, but otherwise, if you're not, I'm going to work through it with you. T equals 9.6. Uh-oh, we cannot have a partial. So it's going to be the most he can buy. You cannot purchase a part of a ticket. Roy can buy at most nine tickets if he buys 10 meals. So, guys, there's a problem down below. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that they want you to put this on a point. So use this down below when it gets time, 9 comma 10. All right, 9 comma 10, remember that. Pause the video if you have to. Get a piece of paper, write everything down. All right. All right, guys, so now we're going to do the reverse. If Roy buys exactly one ticket each day, find the maximum number of meals that he could eat in five days. Show your work. All right. So now we're concentrating on um, the five tickets, but we actually want to know about the meals. Like as of up above, it was the opposite. So one ticket times five days equals five tickets. Substitute that in with the uh, 100 times the T. We're, we're going to substitute T for 5. So 100 times 5 is 500. So 100 times 5 plus 40M is less than or equal to 1360. All right, so 500 plus the 40M equal, or is less than or equal to 1360 minus 500 from both sides. For those who are not brushed up on their algebra. Okay, cancel, cancel. That gives our 40M right there. Is um, 40M is less than or equal to 860. That 1360 minus 500 is 860. And then you want to divide both sides by your 40. Oops. Don't have very much room here. All right. Cancel. Cancel. All right. M 
is less than or equal to 21.5 because we did the 860 divided by the 40 equals to 21.5. Oh, we cannot have a partial here. All right, so that means at the most, we can have our meals at 21. All right, so you cannot purchase a part of a meal. Roy can buy at most 21 meals if he buys five tickets. All right, guys, so um, also keep those points in mind as well. So your five and your 21, because we're going to need them um, down below. All right, let's erase this. All right, number six. To see what is feasible options, you can use a visual display of the values on the graph. Attend to preci precision. So uh, graph your inequality from item three on the grid below. All right, so let's use our formula. 100T plus 40M is less than or equal to 1360. And because of this right here, um, this symbol, less than or equal to, we know it is a solid line boundary and not a dot, a dotted line. All right, M, all right, guys, let's be careful. M is your dependent variable, not your slope. Let's go over here. Important note, it may be confusing that M is used as the dependent variable because we normally use M as the slope. Be careful here. The slope for the boundary line is negative 5, 2. All right. So let's um, change some things around because this needs to be the dependent variable. So let's minus 100 T from both sides, minus 100 T. 100t plus, okay, so cancel, cancel, this comes over here, all right, so we have 40m is less than or equal to negative 100t plus 1360, negative 100t plus 1360, divide by 40, all right, some teachers um, put the fraction bar all the way across and all the way across and put 40, but I don't like doing that. Um, I like to separate them so I know what I'm doing on each and every part. Okay, cancel, cancel. And then uh, we're not going to do 40 um, into 100T because it doesn't go evenly. So um, we're going to leave that. And then 40 into 1360 is 34. So now we have M. Uh, is less than or equal to negative 100 over 40. T plus 34. Okay. Now I'm kind of starting to see your Y equals MX plus B, right? Great. So Y equals MX plus B. All right. So is this solved yet? No, we have to simplify. Simplify. All right. So after we simplify, we get M is less than or equal to negative 5 over 2t plus 34. All right. Pause the video. Write all that down if you have to. All right. All right, guys. So let's look at our rise over run. Negative 5. So everything's going to be going down by... Um, fives and everything's going to be going up by twos so let's look at our tickets and our meals and we're going to start off at zero and 34 so let's put these into ordered pairs all right put this into perspective for you all right, so let's look at 0, 34. So 0 and 34. Uh, 2 and 29. 
22 and 29, 4 and 24, 6 and 19, and 12 and 4. And as you can see, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 12. Uh, I'm sorry, 0, 2, 4, 6, and 12. So it's really kind of going up by twos, and then we're decreasing by fives, 34 to 29, 29 to 24, and then it goes down to uh, 19, and then it goes all the way down to four. Okay, so um, if you want to, you can do each one like this, right? if you wanted to, to get these numbers here and here. All right. Right, guys, so let's go to what is the boundary line on the graph? And of course, we said it was 100T plus 40M equals 1360, or M equals um, your negative 5 over 2T plus 34. So it can be either this or, wait, or uh, I'm sorry, either this or this right here okay so which half plane is shaded how did you decide it's all about the symbol right here um, less than or equal to and we shaded it down below the line um, we predicted it it would go below the line and we did a test point we could do a test point zero comma zero we could do 100 times zero plus 40 times zero and um is uh, less than or equal to 1360. So of course, all that's going to be zero. Zero, yes, is um, less than or um, equal to 1360. All right. And if you want to find the y, uh, I mean, the x-intercept, you can take that zero and put it here for the m and do equals negative 5 over 2t plus 34. And when you get down to through the figure, it would be 13.6 equals T for the tickets. And of course, you can't have a um, decimal. So it'll be approximately 13. All right, guys. So here we go. Uh, remember what I told you above. So let's look at our, oops, our nine tickets, 10 meals right here so write your response for each item as points in the form t comma m so nine tickets comma ten meals okay as an ordered pair all right so let's look at item number five uh five tickets uh 21 meals let's go back up to item number five oh here and five tickets 21 meals okay and we write that as an ordered pair or both those points in the shaded region of your graph. Explain, yes, both of these points are below the boundary line. Use the appropriate tools strategically. Now follow these steps to graph the inequality on a graphing calculator. All right, so replace T with X and replace M with Y. Then solve the inequality for Y. Uh, we all know how should all know how to solve y equals in, um, y equals mx plus b. Enter this equality into your graphing calculator. All right, and it's going to show you how to graph on your calculator. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick to the old-fashioned way. Um, so 100t plus 40m uh, is less than or equal to 1360. We replace the t and the m with x and y. Okay. And then we uh, wanted to get that 100x over um, the other side and cancel it out here to get the 40y by itself, just like we did up here. Just like we did up here, guys. Um, right here. Okay, except we're doing everything with x and y. Okay, so our total is going to be y is um, less than or equal to negative 5 over 2x your rise over your run, plus your 34, all right? Your y equals mx plus b. All right, so use the left arrow key to move the cursor to the far left of the equation you entered. 
this is on your calculator, press enter until the symbol to the left of Y1 changes to, looks like a, um, uh, looks like a shaded boundary line. Okay. What does this symbol indicate about the graph? All right. Yeah. So the symbol indicates the half plane below the boundary line will be shaded technology. All right, so uh, we're going to skip C. Uh, well, actually, C, now press graph. Depending on your window settings, you may or may not be able to see the boundary line. Press window and adjust the viewing window that, so that it matches the graph from item six. Then press the graph again, so item six right here. Okay. All right, D, describe the graph. The graph should show a line with negative slope and with shading below the line. Zoom standard to get window settings back to standard values. All right, so guys, we are gonna stop here at check your understanding. Hopefully I'll have an, a video of that. Um, so we'll stop here. All right, guys, so uh, where I'm getting some of these lessons from are, um, if you look over here at the screen, PSD Algebra 2, um, Lesson 2-2 two, two, Graphing. So I'm getting it from Plain View, uh, Plainfield High School Central Campus. Um, so that is where I got this lesson plan from. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.